Tribies, g'day again. Uh, it's a good day because um, we're in the Mediterranean ring. This is a uh, beautiful sunshine in Nürburgring. It's always sunny here, we know that. And we've got matching colors, if you like, bright yellow. So uh, we're gonna take it for a run around the track, the GD3 RS. I've given you a little walk around before at Zuffenhausen, but uh, now it's time to get the blood going and put it in anger uh, and show you what this new rocket ship can do for us. This place has great memories for me. I won my first Grand Prix here in Nürburgring uh, back in 2009, so beautiful memories. And uh, it's nice to be back here with Porsche in this new little rocket ship. Okay, here we are. Listen to that engine. The aerodynamics, honestly, the stability of this car, the grip it's got, so if you feel like I can really lean on it. The sensation of balance, the car has incredible stability in the high speed corners, gives me a lot of confidence to commit. The G forces you can pull with this car in high speed corners is insane. And I think that the cameraman is uh, struggling a little bit. <laughs> but he's having a good ride. He's hanging in there. Fantastic braking. I mean, with the new knackers as well, we have many, many laps you can drive on the limit because of the brake cooling system. Same as the GT2, different to the GT3 RS Gen 1. So good that the front brakes can remain cool under such heavy load. First time I've had it on a racing track too, so uh, very happy. Done a lot of road driving, but no, no work on the, on the racetrack. Look at the turn in. So nimble, very stable in the high speed too. You can do this all day. I love this car. First time's on track uh, with that car, and I must say, I mean, it's a absolute brutal little weapon, I must say. It's uh, the lateral grip that I get from this car, how precise you can be with it, lap after lap after lap. It's so predictable, but yet you put in the envelope of the, of the limit, and it's so exhilarating and so rewarding. So, um, great job by all the GT team. Obviously, the extra power in the GT3 RS from Gen 2 is also a nice little boost. I love the GD2, but also this is normally aspirated. Gorgeous, gorgeous car. I will have one in my garage. Hey guys, well, we're here at Nürburgring, uh, and we've got who else but Andy Proninger, who knows this car very, very well, the GD3 RS in the background. Andy, we've heard so much about this car. You've been on the record for the last three months, flat out, around the world, talking about what this car has to offer for us. But as a Porsche customer, as well as a, clearly a Porsche fan and a Porsche owner of this car eventually, um, I just want to talk about some of the emotions, if that's all right, about how you got to where you did on this car in terms of design and, and processes. First of all, I have an interesting question about cabin noise and RPM acoustics, because that fascinates me how loud it is, but also how the balance is sensational. It's not loud. I think it's a, uh, I would say it's, it's a very high quality noise. Um, only people that are not into motoring yeah. and not interested in cars would describe this as a molesting noise or something like that. So it, it's a very transparent car, so you hear a lot of the mechanical noise of the gearbox, of the valve train, even, even small stones, the chips of the wheel wells. Yeah. You know? But this is all for a driver that's interested in driving, that's information. Yeah. It is not so much sound engineered it's just an honest car so we did it in the interior we took out a lot of dampening material even more than on a gen 1 okay. car well, so that's why the yes, engine but... that's why the engine seems to be a little bit nearer yeah. to your ears yeah. than on the last model and that's just why the carpentry and especially the back of the car is a lot thinner okay. the foam is out and um, it was a, worth three and a half kilos yeah. uh, in the back of the car which is a world to us which we like to get out yeah. and uh, the positive side effect is you hear even more than on this predecessor. Yeah, well, I like that. That's that's something which I would definitely tick the box for. Right. The torque of this uh, new engine. Let's have a quick talk about that. I mean, uh, pardon the pun. Torque, torque. We're going to talk about it. But in terms of, 
I love the turbo engine in terms of the GD2 turbo S's. The it no, packs and pumps. I love I the turbo know. engines, but the normally aspirated, I think the Gen 1, it was nice, but I wanted that extra torque. How do we how do we achieve that and get that emotion? So the, the, the envelope of the engine for me now is sensational in this engine. This is definitely true. So there's some more than one factor. There are some factors contributing to that. First, it's not just a revised engine of the Gen 1 with 20 horsepower more like you would expect in a generation two or in a facelift, as it was called. It's a whole new engine. I mean, it's the same base engine that we introduced uh, about 12 months ago on the GT3, but it's a big step up from the, for the, from the Gen 1 because we got a bigger crankshaft, so the main, main diameter of the bearings is a lot bigger. We got a different oil sump system in the car. We got a different valve train. We use a rigid valve train, so we don't have any more hydraulic valve adjusters that are offer resistance. and. In the old engine, we uh, pumped like 120 liters of oil in a minute. On that car, only 70 is necessary. Wow. So the work the pump has to do is a lot less, and you yeah. can use all this power yeah. to get it to the wheel and uh, have fun with it. That's one part. The crankshaft is cross-drilled, so all the, uh, all the bearings of the conrods are directly fed. So that's why everything works a little bit more efficient in that engine. And um, the overall result is an engine that revs higher, revs more explosively and offers more torque yeah. and that's what you feel as a driver especially not under full throttle but under part throttle, throttle as yeah. well and normally you're always mostly on part throttle yeah. and that's where this engine really shines yeah two more questions i want to talk about the brakes and the knacker so we got the the knacker system which was born out on the gd2 rs right yeah, so right. it's so, beautiful cooling for the for the front uh, brake uh, inertia and all, all the loads we have yeah. in, in these uh in the brake system now right yeah, yeah. So very proud on these snake cars. I mean, like uh, many small brothers, they're stealing off the shelf their big brother. So that was the case here too. Uh, it was taken from the 2RS. And, and, and these snake cars, they have, they, have, they, have, they have a great advantage. Um, we say it's a win-win-win situation because the temperatures, uh, the cooling temperatures, or the, the air is so cool, it uh, is a more efficient cooling stream that goes directly to the brakes because it goes through the body and right and uh, ends directly at the, at the caliper and at the, at the rotor and you get very clean, very cold air directly on the brake. On the Gen 1 cars without NACA, we had some shovels on the lower arms that vented the air up. And these shovels had a disadvantage because they stand in the wind, they lift the car, so they're bad for downforce, they're bad for coefficient drag, and the cooling of the brakes was not as efficient. So we've got a better CD, CW, a coefficient drag on the car, we got better brake cooling and we got more downforce. So that's a perfect example of how we transfer motorsport knowledge yeah. from the race cars, because this is a race car oh, yeah. feature to the street cars and it works. Absolutely. That's uh, very important for us warriors on and off the track. That's Absolutely. One last one, and it looks good. It looks that's, sexy, that's the fourth it looks, it looks sexy. Better. It, it looks, looks, looks better. The styling looks nice and yeah. you know, I really like that. But uh, this is the first time really we've had a, a Weissach package car. So the Weissach package was introduced first in the 918, which was a motorsport project as well. And um, we thought, okay, it was so successful, we should do something similar on the 2RS as well. And so we invented these parts in synchronicity with uh, the GT2 RS development. And they consist of the carbon fiber hood, which is carbon fiber as well on a standard car, but it's painted. Yeah. So this clear coat here is a little bit lighter than the, than the painted car. It's a little bit more obvious <laughs> and uh, a little bit more racy and uh, then we go on to the roof which is carbon fiber as well and it's a very special carbon fiber because uh, on a gen 1 car and on the standard car we have a magnesium yeah. magnesium sheet um, uh, roof which is uh, in itself not lighter than a normal carbon fiber roof but this one is a new uh, is a new development with only two or two and a half layers and a special clear coat which is even lower weight than the magnesium okay. roof by about 400 grams yeah. and the rear spoiler is the third part of this uh, carbon visible carbon fiber program it's 800 grams lighter than the painted version which is carbon fiber as well but yeah. as, as well here's a lightweight paint um, involved so and it gives a let's say a very very credible carbon touch to the car in the interior we have a titanium roll cage which uh, brings the weight in comparison to a steel cage down by about 10 kilos 9.5 kilos big chunk, big chunk of chunk. metal and it's in the back of yeah, the car yeah, it's and it's as safe and yeah. as durable as yeah. the uh, as the uh, steel version as well yeah. so a great um, leap for searching weight in the interior as well 
Well, and let's not forget about the wheels yeah. because on one, that one, on yeah. that car we have these uh, magnesium wheels, which are beautiful. They're not supposed to be beautiful because this is the most lightweight design you can have because this is the motorsport design and motorsport design is not um, it, motorsport wheels do not look like that because they like to be beautiful because it's the, just the best compromise between rigidity structural yeah. rigidity and weight yes. and they're made from magnesium and you save 11.5 kilos in comparison to the already very light aluminum wheels that yeah. come stock with the car yeah. so uh, we have a weight advantage overall about 27 or 28 kilos uh, if you compare to the standard car which is quite substantial which big you chunk. can feel a big chunk yeah. yeah absolutely well that's why it's very very uh, popular so almost everybody <laughs> opts for the visa package yeah, yeah. so in the moment we have problems of getting out the parts in the in the in the in the in the quantity that we need them yeah, yeah. so we are a little bit uh, overwhelmed by the success of this package yeah. but uh, it works and it works on the car and it works on the market well andy well done to your whole team. No one ever gets sick of something being a bit light in weight. So, uh, so that's good. I mean, we've touched on many things there that maybe some people haven't, uh, haven't heard in some of your other chats, Andy. So uh, thanks for your time, Matt, as always. And uh, You're very welcome, see you on the other side of the pit wall. Okay, thank you.